Hey folks, it's Brian at Between the Oaks again. Uh, I'm excited about this one. This is the composting that really appeals to my inner dork and my inner lazy man. Uh, we let the worms do most of the work on this one. Kingwood's got a number of backyard, homegrown earthworm casting providers. Uh, I'll try and get some links to them and some information how y'all can get in contact with them on the website. But a lot of these guys and gals just started off in their backyard with a Rubbermaid tote with a small colony of worms. And uh, small vendors like that are doing a lot to bring the organic market and the organic ideals forward. And uh, in my book, nothing really replicates or can duplicate what the worms do. They're nature's way of composting and nature's way of feeding and fixing the soil. And this is one of my favorite ways to, to get their product back into my plants. This is what we're using right now to inoculate our greenhouse to build up our bacterial colonies and our protozoa colonies. So I'll give you a quick rundown on actively aerated compost tea. You don't need much. You need a five gallon bucket and some unchlorinated water. If you're on city water here in Kingwood, it's treated with chlorine. But the chlorine will escape the water as a gas. Uh, the easiest and fastest way to do that is to go ahead and throw your aerating stones into the bottom of your bucket and let it bubble three plus hours. Uh, you can find the supplies for this at any pet store. I walked into a local pet supplier and asked them to point me towards their biggest aerator with the baddest stone. And uh, I think I got all this and got out of the store for under 50 bucks. And uh, with some castings and some stuff to feed the castings in the process, uh, we're ready to make compost. So if you're on city water, get the bubbles going for three to four hours so all the chlorine can escape as a gas. And these are some of our local worm castings uh, for a five gallon bucket. Uh, anywhere between two to five pounds would be plenty. You add the castings to your unchlorinated water and then we feed the bacteria with dried molasses. Uh, you can use cane sugar, any other acceptable form of sugar. I find that dried molasses works best because it's unrefined and it's unsulfurized which is the trick with the molasses. We add a couple tablespoons of molasses that feeds the bacteria colonies and gets them going and then use any sort of kelp or any sort of seaweed product and that's what feeds the bacteria. Like I was saying in some of the earlier videos, uh, most vegetables prefer bacterial, bacterial dominated soil, but you have to have a fungus component because uh, fungus do a lot of things to, to trap various predators down in the root zone. So a couple teaspoons of the kelp to feed the fungus, and we set it to boil. And uh, if you let your tea boil or bubble and aerate for about 48 hours, uh, you'll notice a rich earthy smell. To me it kind of reminds me of a, a Malbec or wet log, you know, leaves that are decomposing in the fall. It's a real rich, earthy, humus smell. Uh, if your compost tea stinks and uh, somebody's complaining about it, you're just not getting enough bubbles in it. So that's really the only thing to watch out for. But if your tea smells foul, that means your process has gone anaerobic. And the trick for that is just getting some more aeration and some more bubbles through your mix. So once you've got everything mixed together and you've got it bubbling, you need to let it seep for 48 hours. And after 48 hours, once you pull your tea, it's best to start applying it through a garden sprayer within 24 hours or the bacterial colonies will start to die slowly. So I'll, uh, I'll show you all some finished product. All right, once your tea's brewed for 48 hours, uh, really the last step before application is to strain it. Believe it or not, I forgot my pantyhose, and uh, a pair of size Q pantyhose fits perfectly over the lid of a five gallon bucket. So once you're ready to transfer it and extract your tea and apply it, just take your, your, raw, or your, uh, your fully seeped and ready to go aerated tea, put a size Q pantyhose over the bucket you want to pour into and just pour over and your tea's been strained and it's ready to apply with a backpack sprayer, trombone sprayer, any way you want to get it into your plants. And the finished product when we're done 
is a beautiful, rich, bacterial loaded. Nutrient packed compost tea. Once your tea is ready, you can dilute it. Uh, the tea itself is super concentrated. So if we're using for a foliar application or for a ground soak, you can dilute it anywhere between one gallon of tea with five gallons of water. Uh, for a foliar application, the beauty of worm casting tea and actively aerated compost teas is that it's a nitrogen form and a bacterial form that's readily accepted through the leaves of the plant. So you'll see progress. Your plants will perk up, you'll green up, uh, they'll come to life within just 48 hours of application in a controlled environment. Uh, actively aerated compost tea is one of the easiest ways to truly begin to get a grasp on what's going into your soil how you can balance your soil with microbiology and how you can begin to take control of the soil food web yourself in your own garden. We start all of our plants from a organic certified non-GMO seeds here at the farm in our greenhouse here. And uh, we go to painstaking efforts to, to try to follow, set, and exceed the organic standard in our plant hygiene and care practices. And this is where the worm tea really comes into play. Because with this stuff, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth gallons and gallons of cures and the cures that most gardeners typically turn to are reactionary fungicide methods, herbicide methods, and pesticide controls that in the long run do nothing other than to destroy the soil food web. The easiest way to get away from that and start seeing immediate results and uh, start repairing the soil and start saving our topsoil is with the actively eroded compost tea. So I've diluted one gallon of compost tea in a few gallons of water and we use this backpack sprayer to basically inoculate our plants and our soil and from here as we transplant out all the bacteria and beneficial microorganisms that we take from the plants that are in the pots, they get transplanted right along with the vegetables into the field. So in the application of compost tea, the only real trick is that as you apply it, you want to leave your leaves dripping. With a lot of crops that are already vulnerable to, to fungus, uh, it's probably best to water in the morning so the sunlight has a chance to to dry out and cook off the moisture because uh, moisture control goes hand in hand with uh, preventing blight and uh, a lot of the other problems that you folks were asking me about. So if I could give you all one tip uh, aside from you know regular appropriate watering amounts uh, using natural teas that would be to try and water your crops or your vegetables in the morning.